Okay, so now we'll be continuing on chapter 2, page 63, and we left off about the uh, European sphere. So, uh, <clears throat> the first pan-European... <clears throat> uh, let me start again. <clears throat> the first pan-European institution, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, is already established and con capitalized... <clears throat> at some 12 billion in this bank all countries on the European continent together with Japan and America acting as equal partners study and finance a variety of projects. It is intended to be an apprentice shop for the transition from a centralized economy to a market economy. It will finance the great transportation <clears throat> One sec. <clears throat> um, Oh, look. <clears throat> the rapprochement so yes this bank is an apprentice shop for the transition from a centralized to a market economy So this bank <coughs> will finance the great transportation and communication systems that will reduce the distance between people, ideas, and products on a continent too long divided against itself. This rapprochement between the two halves of Europe will depend on the success of these networks. <coughs> The process of embarking on such continent-wide projects will itself cause a continual economic and social collapse. Cultural, sorry. 
um, the process of embarking on such continent-wide projects will itself cause a continual economic and cultural homogenization of what will one day be a European sphere. <clears throat> so the process Sorry, uh, the bank will finance these uh, transportation and communication systems to reduce the distance between the peoples and the ideas and the products itself on a continent too long divided against itself. What a dream, right? <clears throat> the rapprochement between the two halves of Europe will depend on the success of these networks. The rapprochement between the two halves of Europe will depend on the success of these networks. The process of uh, embarking on such continent-wide projects will itself cause a continuous economic and cultural homogenization of what will one day be a European sphere. <clears throat> Conformity is the motto. And taxation, right? <clears throat> for the creation, <clears throat> <clears throat> for the creation of a European confederation, for the entry of all European countries into the existing European community, for the construction of a European common home, the bank will play a similar ro similar role to the European steel, uh, coal and steel community of the 1950s as the cornerstone of today's European community. So money is, time is money, yeah. If this process is successful, the European sphere will unify in a natural way. All the countries in the region will belong to continental institutions. Europe will have started down the path towards embracing its own common identity, escaping from ancient quarrels. The stability of this emergent European sphere depends greatly on how well a unified, united Germany performs. For it is clear that Germany provides the link between the two parts of the continent. All right, that means the German people have to suffer the greatest, <laughs> right? <clears throat> That's uh, how I see it, but uh, let's go on to the next chapter when I return page 64.